Hi, I'm Martin. Welcome to this quick look at uh, enums and the enums is editor buttons uh, script in the asset store. I'm going to start by explaining what enums are, why you want to use enum flags. They're really useful for when um, you have a character that has like uh, which weapons is he proficient in and which kind of factions does he belong to. These kind of things where um, the value represents multiple possible multiple check boxes and multiple possibilities. That's where they're really useful. So I'm going to explain enums, enum flags, which make this kind of use of enums possible, and then how to use the edit script to actually show these and edit this in the inspector in a really um, comfortable way. So now let's get started. Buttons. Um, I'm going to explain what enums are in general, why you can use enums as flags, and then I'll briefly look into what the script actually does for you. So let's start with the enums. I've already prepared a little test script for this uh, demo, which is called test enum. Here you can see an enum. An enum is a, 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 a type of a, for variables. Um, and here I'm defining a, a new enum called quality and has these possible values. Good, great, awesome, huge, and let's call the last one tremendous. Um, so these are the six possible values we can have. And over here we have, we, we're using quality for food, so it's food quality and we're setting it as great. Uh, and then we're outputting this through the debug. So let's just look at um, what this gives us. Here we're outputting the food quality directly, and here we're casting it as an int. I'm going to explain to why we're going to going to do this in a second. So let's just run Unity and look at the console down here. Oh no, of course we first need to add the object, so otherwise it's not going to do anything. Let's just call this our test enum object, which ha does nothing except for putting text into our console when I run play. So there we go, and this is what we got. We got food quality is great and the int equals two. So why does the int equal two? So this is an enum, it's just great. Where, where does this int come from? So what uh, what the, what code does, what the C-sharp does is it gives each of these values a number um, to store it directly and then references the number to tell us which value, which what name it has. Um, these are just names for different numbers basically. And by default, it assigns them as such. First one is going to be zero. The second one is going to be one. Second one, th then we go to three, to two, to three, to four, and finally to five. So if I change this to tremendous, yeah, we're going to see that it's going to change to five. Um, let's just do this again to prove my point. And it's not doing anything. Why isn't it doing anything? The, I forgot to save, I guess. Yes, I did. There we go. Now it should be doing something. And there we go, it's tremendous and five. So as you see, I've, you, I can also define these manually. Like if I wouldn't have added this, it'd still be five. Um, so, but if I change it to eight now, just because I want to, um, now it will change to eight as well in, in, the, in the log. And here you can see it has changed to eight. So why would you want to do this? Um, the reason you may want to set these values is because you're actually using them. So you're casting your enum as, a, as an int to use it later on. Let's say uh, this um, is used as a value for the quality of the play, player performance and then gives a, s a specific amount of points as well. Then you might want to use these uh, to kind of um, um, serve a double purpose if you want to. But what we're using them for in this context is as flags. And um, I'm just going to reset that to five. And um, I need to explain a little bit about flags before we can get to started. So the idea behind flags is that we set um, to, it to a number that stands for multiple names at the same time. So instead of it being bad or, or good or great or awesome, it is both bad and awesome, which doesn't make a lot of sense in this context. So let's start with a new enum, which is going to call it enum weapon type. Weapon type. And we're going to add um, swords, axes, hammers, and spears, the classic thingies. So there you go. So now instead of food quality, I can uh, um, add, I'm going to add an enum called, um, let's just call it proficiency, because the character is proficient in multiple of these. Then we're going to give him proficiency of swords, and we're going to there we go. So I'm gonna print that. So again, it's gonna be zero. Just let's just do access so we can see the one. 
um, just so you know what 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 it is by default. And uh, yeah, full quality is access is one. Yeah, there we go. So should change this to proficiently so we know what we're playing with so now that the, the thing about flags is you want to not just set access you want to set multiple things so let's set it to access and um, uh, and the weapon type hammers yeah because we want the player to be proficient with access and hammers that's pretty awesome he's, he's a badass so let's see what that does first and now as you can see, suddenly he's not proficient in axes or hammers, he's proficient in spears. What happened there? So this is why I was talking about the numbers. You can see the value of this uh, of proficiency is three, which sure um, makes sense. I mean, if you look at what's here, um, implied by the, by, by, the, by the software by default, this one's zero, this one's one, this one's two, and this one's three. And what we've just done, is we've basically added one and two together and then resulted in three. So now it's spears and not axes and hammers. And that's um, where the flags come in. And for flags to work, you need to do a few things. Firstly, we, we're going to add system flags here. So the system knows we want to use this enum as a flag. Um, and then we need to set numeric values here that actually make sense. That can be, that can set each of these on and off. And this kind of, leads us uh, into binary code. So to make this possible, let's say um, this is our, 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 our options. Uh, do I have the right order? No, I don't. It's access hammers and spears, not to confuse everybody. And then what I want to do is I want to be able to set this one to true, this one to false and false and false, Whoops. basically. Yeah, and it's just, and maybe set this one to true and these to false. And I want to be able to set both of these to true and these to false. But just to make it easy, let's just go with one, one, one. In, as, as zero and one, a shortcut for true and false because they're easier to read, and they make us look make it look like binary. So let's just do. Oops. There we go. So um, now this kind of looks like binary code, and that's exactly what we're gonna do with this. So in binary, the first. Um, uh, letter, first number, um, the first digit, there we go, sorry, English not my primary language, um, is val has a value of one, second one of two, then of four, and then of eight, which means if we multiply these, we'll always end up with a unique number. So in this case, it will be, uh, it will be one, in this case it will be two, this one would be one and two, three, which is the result we just had, but that's more of a coincidence, and this one would be 12. So, and, uh, no, it's actually not the result we had because we had access and amnesty. And this one, which is the one we just had, would have a result of six instead of three. So, but if you do it like this, every value is unique. So every combination is possible and always results in a unique number. So it's always a recognizable value. So to do that, um, I need to do this um, as follows. I need to do this as one, as two, as four, or and as eight. So now um, with our uh, setting setting proficiency to access and hammers, access being two and hammers being four, the result should be six. So let's uh, give this a try. And there we go. It's actually correct. It tells us it's access and hammers and the int is six. It's pretty simple if you know a little bit of a binary, which you now do. So there's another way you can you can set these uh, these values, which is a different way to write it, but the result is the same. It's by using the bitwise operator. Let's just copy this one over here. Um, here you can see it's pretty much the same. Um, uh, sort of a similar set of values from it from the text uh, from the from the example. I'm just gonna make it look the same. So this is the same. It's just sh shifting this over to over one bit and so on. It's basically results in the same numeric values. This is gonna be one, two, um, this is gonna be one, two, oh, it's actually one too much, the whips. One, two, four, and eight, yeah. There's something you notice here in uh, difference to here. The zero isn't being set. Here the zero is being used as bad. Here the zero isn't being used because um, it has to be, otherwise it's not possible to set no flag. 
So if we if we change it as like so, um, it means that sorts is always going to be true, regardless of which one we set, because um, that's just how it would end up being. If this one was a zero, it would always be contained within that one. Let's just give this a try and see if I'm talking some sense here. No, it's not. Well, it still is, but it's uh, not impossible. No. So it's still axes and hammers. It's now three instead of four. No, instead of six, um, which is correct. But if I now set the proficiency to to nothing, yeah, uh, to weapon type default, and the other line to run. There we go. Default. The default value of weapon type. There we go. Now we're going to get the proficiency of swords because it's being set to zero and zero equals swords. So now it's impossible to have no, uh, no proficiency. If that's something you want, it's okay to set to zero value. Um, in general, you don't want that, so don't do it. So start with one, two, four, eight. So it's powers of two or do it with the bitwise operator, the result is gonna be the same. I'm just gonna get rid of that. So that's basically what the enum flags are all about. And now let's talk about what the what the script actually does for you. So let's say we actually go back to the script and we're gonna make public, make the weapon type for the proficiency public. There we go. And kill this one. And now we'll see it here. And you can see how, how uh, proficiencies are dis uh, displayed in Unity. Now you can see these are all the pos possible proficiencies. I can select swords, axes, hammers, and spears. And as you saw in early on, um, this one was empty. Let's just reset this. And you see it's empty because the proficiency by default is set to zero. There's nothing contradictory in the script that tells it to be set to a different value. And zero ha doesn't have a name assigned to it. So there's not gonna be anything visible, which is generally what you want in the sort of flex thing. You could add a none equals zero, but we're not going to do that for the context of the script because otherwise my script has some some issues, which I actually might want to fix at some point. Anyway, so, but the issue is, since this is flag, I can only select one and that's not what I want. I want to be able to select for this instance of the character that he's proficient in axes and hammers here in the editor, not in, in the script. And that is exactly what my script does. Um, so what you need to do is you need to add the enum flags attribute to your uh, your public field. So I'm just going to add enum flags. Now the system knows, okay, this is an enum that is used as a flag and will display it accordingly in the inspector. So let's let, wait for it to reload. And there we go. Now you can see it's swords, axes, hammers, and spears, and you can click which ones you want. Let's just give them all of them which should put us to one, two, four, eight, that's 13, no, that's 15. Yeah, and there you see, proficiency so now has swords, axis, hammer, spears, equals 15. Um, and this is the basics of what the script does. It has uh, some display options, if you wanna uh, be more fancy about it. You can um, add a number, an int integer, after, uh, after the flag as a, as a parameter here, which tells it how many buttons it'll show in a row. So if by default, it'll try to fit as many as it can without making the buttons too small. If you can see, um, if I make it too small, it'll, it'll wrap around. And if I make it big, it'll try and fit them all in one line, which is some, usually the most flexible thing. But in some cases you may have very long names and you want them all readable. What you can then do is add like a two in here, which tells the, 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 the editor script to, all right, I only want two buttons per row. And then once it has reloaded, you see it, it'll switch accordingly. And that is pretty much it. Um, you can see the different uh, different values in the examples. There's some test objects included, which is simple scriptable objects. And you can see this is an option for just one or for two or for, si for four in a row or for like flexible. And you see the lower ones don't resize. They're always the same buttons, same amount of buttons. Um, and that is pretty much how it works. It also supports multi-editing. So if you select multiple value, uh, multiple objects with, um, with flags, you see that the first ones are marked because they have the same value in each of them. And the other ones are kind of, none of them are marked and they have this little tag here mixed that tells you these have mixed values. You should be careful when you edit something, you will overwrite all of them. 
So you see, this one has swords and bows, and this one has bows and axes. And if I now go whips, they will all be set to just whips. Yeah. So, and that's it. That's pretty much a, an overview of um, how enums work, how enum flags work, and what the script does. Uh, I hope you enjoy it, and I'm happy to hear feedback if there's anything you want to add to the script or need changed. Or, um, also, if you find some time, I'd always love a review to kind of figure out how this thing is going and if you guys like it. And yeah, that's it for me.